Ah, it sure is good to be back home in San Diego after that fight with an ancient demon god who materialized in our creepy basement right on top of my pile of mysterious CDs. It's too bad that in the ensuing battle, we not only lost our house, but I was also turned into a poorly animated cartoon. Oh well, after a long streak of not uploading videos, there's only one thing to do. I'm gonna go play some video games. I may as well check in on my comments real quick to see what people have been saying in my absence. Oh wow, I need to make a new fucking video. But I don't want to just go right back to work after everything I've gone through. I just want to play some video games. But maybe, I can do both. Creepypasta games. Who makes these things? Who would want to make such a thing? Degenerates. But the people who play them are even worse, and that's what I am today. Arguably, the most famous of all creepypasta related games are the Slender games. Back when I actually used to browse Reddit, I was on the Slenderman subreddit the day Slender first came out. Someone posted it and I thought, huh, that's cool, I might play it a bit later. Then within about a day or two, it fucking exploded and it's been talked and played to death ever since. Even Toonami gave their piece on it. Oh, hey. I've been playing this game, Slender. It's free. Just find it online and settle in for one of the scariest games you'll ever play. No, seriously. You need to find eight pages. Who knows why? As you find them, you'll start being chased by something called the Slender Man. You never actually see him move, but when you look at him... Don't look at him! That happens. Slender's the scariest game I've ever played. Ah! Toonami doesn't even know what to give Slender. Ah! Here we go again. As for me, I think the game is serviceable, bordering on mediocre. For a free game, it's honestly pretty great, but it wasn't the titan of terror I was led to believe it was. I've certainly played scarier. Even its paid-for sequel, Slender the Arrival, was a scarier game. I just can't get over how Slenderman looks so goofy and low-res in this game. Look at him. He looks like Gumby. Not to mention, the game is really open and spacious. Not really taking advantage of how claustrophobic these kinds of games usually are. And Slenderman doesn't really blend into the trees like I feel he should. It's conducive to the gameplay of wandering around and finding items, but it's not conducive to scares. What's not conducive to wandering around is that you move so fucking slow! Slenderman actually has quite an assortment of games based around him. From mere fan mods of Slender to fully fleshed out unique games. But that's not what you're here for, is it? No. No, you want that real shit. You want the games based on terrible creepypastas. So let's start with one of the worst ones ever made, Sonic.exe. Now the first Sonic.exe game I was aware of was a faithful recreation of the original story. It did its best to try and make the game scary, but it was a little too faithful. It had all the same stupid distracting shit like the Kefka laugh, the hyper-realistic I am God image, all the dumb shit that makes Sonic.exe what it is. Short of the protagonist, of course, you're gonna have to fill those shoes yourself. Over time, the game was updated and more content was added, but I never really kept track of it because of the concept. I mean, how much better could a Sonic.exe game possibly get? Well, the latest iteration of a Sonic.exe game came out this year, and wow, this took a fucking turn. Sonic.exe, the spirits of hell, is a roller coaster ride. For starters, there is fully fleshed out voice acting in this game that sounds shockingly close to the actual characters. I have to make sure that Sonic's okay. This will have to do for now, but it won't take long before I can use its full potential. I just need a few more souls. Much more. There's also a real story and multiple endings based on your choices and whether or not you're able to save the characters you play as. Fucking Life is Strange doesn't offer you that much. 
choices matter my ass. However, these choices can be pretty arbitrary, and it doesn't really come down to logic. It's just a guessing game. One of them is just, hey, pick which button to push. The English in the game's text still isn't that great, though, so that much is kept true from the original. It's very important in that game. You have two choices, one of them bad. If choose bad, you gonna die. Choose carefully. Yeah, thanks game, I'll keep that in mind. Though even the voice acting isn't the best at times. It does a surprising job of taking the groundwork laid by the original story and doing something different with it. In the original story, Tom was mostly just running in straight lines or back and forth which would make for horribly boring gameplay, and while there's still plenty of Sonic hallway simulators, here there's an actual hide and seek game with Tails, there's a maze with Knuckles, and a platforming section with Robotnik. All of this comes together in a massive boss battle with Sonic himself. The Tails section easily offers the most resistance, but it's not all that difficult to win. Overall, the amount of effort put into this game is astonishing for such a terrible pasta. It's actually kind of worth a play for yourself. I think that's the best I can say about anything related to Sonic.exe. Up next, we're moving on to Pokemon. Of the Pokemon creepypastas, Lost Silver is arguably one of the most famous and the first of its kind that I ever actually read. Wouldn't you know it, there's a game of this too. Much like the original Sonic.exe game, this is mostly just a faithful recreation with good attention to detail. Everything is there from the unknowns in your party that spell out ominous messages to you slowly losing your body parts over the course of the game. Something interesting to note is that the game is not actually a ROM hack. It's just a game made from the ground up to look and play exactly like Pokemon Silver. I actually used to like Lost Silver back when I first read it, but it's fallen out of favor for me now. It's just too cliche and played out and hardly what I'd call scary. The part of the Jello Apocalypse fanfiction video that talks about creepypastas is largely a parody of this pasta and sums up my feelings on it pretty well. On the file, I am in Elite Four versus Lance and only have six Pokemon in my party. They all unknown and they spell... You're dead! Pretty suspicion, I think, but probably just something in my eye? There's also Hypno's Lullaby, based on the short poem slash song slash creepypasta thing that I'll give mention to as well. Basically, there's a plot where a bunch of children have gone missing, so you go looking through the berry forest and become captured yourself by the offending Hypno. Honestly, these games aren't really anything special. They're just short little walking simulators that are meant to be spooky. So YouTubers can react to them and be like, Oh my gosh, a Pokemon is so scary. I guess it worked though. I don't have 700,000 views on my videos. God damn. Ultimately though, there's not much in the way of actual gameplay. It's usually just a single battle that you have no chance of winning so that spooky things can happen. I guess it's because the actual battle parts of Pokemon are really hard to make scary, but then the overworld wandering is the most boring part of gameplay. So there's a real conflict of interest here. Overall, there's nothing too special here. Now I know what you're thinking. Fish, video game pasta video games based on video games are nice and all, but what about for non-video game pasta video games? Well, let's look into some of those. I found a Squidward suicide game after Googling it, but this was an EXE file that I was not willing to download. I'm sorry, I don't want to fuck up my computer for this. Thankfully, someone else was brave enough to do it instead. Thanks, creepy faded spark. This is honestly one of the worst looking games I've ever seen. It's just a transparent PNG of SpongeBob moving left to right until you see Squidward, then there's a jump scare. That's the whole game. The whole experience lasts about 45 seconds total. I think Creepy Faded Spark's reaction sums it up perfectly. Do you deserve a hug? Or Sonic Oh no, the most terrifying jump scare ever, Windows 98, no! Is... Please tell me that wasn't it. No. No! That was horrible! This is actually worse than the source material. I can't believe you got outdone by Sonic.exe here, Squidward Suicide. You should be ashamed of yourself. What about Laughing Jack? You know, sure, surely, he must have a decent game out there, right?
Hey, Snuff Bomb, when you made the spooky child murderer character, is this about what you had in mind? There is nothing to this game except for dressing up Laughing Jack in a predetermined set of clothes. I would expect to find this kind of game on some Disney bootleg site with other riveting games like Elsa fingernail clipping. That one was a classic. Underwear option, what is- Oh no! Oh no, look at that! This is the worst! I spoke too soon. Clearly, this is what Snuffbomb had in mind when creating Laughing Jack. The character has never left me this traumatized before. Let's try and move on from this horrible experience before the nightmare set in. Okay, we got a new one here. Creepy Pasta Fighters. Well, this one seems to be a fighting game. Works for me, actually. This is a half decent concept. It's actually able to take advantage of some of the crazy characters and abilities in Creepy Pastas. Let's go for it. Evil Ed? Who the hell is Evil Ed? This is clearly Jeff the Killer. Can I switch characters? No, I guess not. I'm sorry, the Razor? So Evil Double D is fighting a scooter. Yeah, okay. Battle for the ages here. Let's get it on. Round one. Fight. Is that... That's the bad creepypasta intro music. Why is it in this game? Did the devs look at bad creepypasta and think, Oh, these guys who ripped a shot of the characters we're putting into our game, let's use their theme music. I seriously have no idea what I'm doing. There's no combo list best I can tell, so all I'm doing is just mashing buttons and jumping around like crazy. Sometimes I'll pull off combos. I'm sorry. Did Mexican bootleg Jeff the Killer just do a fucking Hadouken? I really need to read this Evil Ed story if he's pulling off that kind of shit. The game really isn't that hard. I was able to bumble my way through the Razor and was met with this. Fuck him. Well, that's just a bit inappropriate, don't you think? Then suddenly there's this 10 second timer and I eventually figured out that you have to press the animal buttons in the order they're presented here to do a finishing move. So let's see what we got. Go fuck yourself. Fatality. Pussy. I'm at a... I'm at a loss for words, honestly. I can't tell if this is genius or retarded. I didn't want to have to go this far, but I've already run out of options. I refuse to have the best game I look at tonight be Sonic.exe. We've already strayed into his territory with his Mexican clone, Evil Ed. It's time to look at Jeff the Killer games. Oh, wow. There are a lot of these. It shouldn't surprise me, but wow. This is almost rivaling how many Slenderman games there are. Let's kill Jeff the Killer. Sounds good to me. Oh, shit. This kind of looks like an actual game. Sure, the poly count is low and the textures aren't great, but for a browser game, this doesn't look half bad. I can also see that Jeff is accompanied by his longtime established companions, the giant rat brothers. Come on, come on guys, come on. You can't, you can't pretend you don't remember them. Rats, we're rats, we're the rats. You are trapped in abandoned city, but you are not alone. There is Jeff the Killer and his evil rats. See? Part of the lore. So this game's premise is essentially a slender clone, but you have a gun and fight Jeff the Killer. And his rats. This seems kind of antithetical to the slender formula, but that's because you're supposed to kill Jeff every single time you do something of importance. Find one of the lanterns, kill Jeff. Ooh, look, a fucking assault rifle here in the park. There's Jeff, better use it. Shotgun, Jeff. I didn't play long enough to see if there was a rocket launcher or sniper rifle to kill Jeff with. Jeff kind of spawns out of thin air whenever you reach a certain point of interest, and he's so easy to deal with that the game is pitifully easy. Or it would be except this mouse sensitivity is fucking atrocious. But even then, you have regenerating health and there's plentiful health kits all around. Not to mention, Jeff and his rats don't do much damage to begin with. Ooh, yeah, that's intimidating. You gonna tell me a spooky ghost story? There's not much of this game, but it's not the worst thing in the world. It's also apparently part of a series, which I can assume contains mostly similar games. Let's try G the Killer now. This one's real bare bones. It's a 2D side scroller where you have to walk around your house looking for... apparently code sheets? Not sure why. Not sure why you have a poster of Slenderman in your room either. 
Along the way, you can hide from Jeff the killer behind curtains and in cabinets. Oh, look at you. There he is, folks. Picture of horror. Let's be real, though. The best part about this game is you can make your character do the moonwalk. I didn't get far in this one. There's no jump scares or anything, and it's apparently just another tedious Slender clone, but in 2D. Yeah, no thanks. Next. Okay, here's another one. Jeff Origins. This is apparently the sequel to a game that was, by the creator's own admission, so bad it was considered the room of horror games. It was so terrible, he actually deleted it from Game Jolt because it was not worth having up there. I could only find videos of the original, and it seems... Uh... What happened? Why did that happen? What? There's a few corpses in one of the rooms in the back. Please don't tell me your son is one of them. He's buried, boy. Those corpses are all of his victims. Sure enough, one of them will be you if you don't scram. <sighs> I'm just stepbrother. <laughs> what? That makes me feel. Not great. But hey, we have the sequel now. Surely they've learned from their mistakes. Maybe they've made something decent to close out on. Let's find out. Okay, well, this is promising, I'm sure. Just the same three second background loop over and over for our title screen. Decent music, though. Pretty spooky and atmospheric. Well, let's not beat around the bush. Play single player. Oh shit, it's a level select? You don't even have to unlock them, you can just skip around anytime you want. Okay, cool, probably gonna get my mileage out of that. Let's take it from the top. Cutscene 1. Antagonists. Jeff the Killer. The Skinner? Wait, what? Uh, and her? I thought I was playing Jeff Origins. Who are these clowns? Alright, let's get started. Oh god, this motion blur. Look at this shit. I feel like I'm gonna puke just looking at this, and it's lagging the hell out of a pretty bare-bones Unity game. Sorry, no, I'm turning this off. I don't know why people love to smear excessive motion blur onto everything, and Bloom too, because we need really bright lights for our horror game. Okay, now we can really get started here even though there's no anti-aliasing. Plank? Is that you? Well, you're coming with me, pal. Let's get out of here. Boy, this wobbling while you walk is gonna get real old fast. Okay, so we're, uh... I have no idea where we are. Whoever we're playing as seems to remember this place, though. There's a piece of dock here. The ground is on fire. I'm just so confused. Oh, Jesus, there's Jeff. Fuck, he's fast. Get him, Plank. Come on. Kick his midget ass. Got him. Jeff the Killer. Horror icon. World famous creepypasta. Bested by a plank of wood. And let's teabag him to add insult to injury before we go. Oh, thank goodness for the conveniently placed exit sign. Now we can get out of the courtyard of free Unity assets. Go into your bed. If you see anything weird, exit through the door. Uh, okay. What am I supposed to be? Oh, that's intimidating. Yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna go out there. Wait, what the fuck? Ah! What happened? Did I do something wrong? What? Oh, it's just continuing? That was supposed to happen? Okay. Collect all eight corpses. No, 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 no. You cannot fucking tell me this leads into another Slender clone. You cannot be serious. And collect corpses. What, pages aren't spooky enough? You gotta have my guy lugging around eight decomposing human bodies? And can I just say, this wallpaper is so taggy. This isn't even like Slender where it's a big open forest that's conducive to wandering around and collecting items. It's this indoor maze that makes no fucking sense. Where are we? What is the purpose of this place? These rooms? If you want this to be a maze, why not have it be a more natural location for one, like a hedge maze or some catacombs? But even then, a maze is not exactly what I want when I'm also trying to run for my life from monsters and collect items. It's claustrophobic, sure, but more importantly, it's confusing and frustrating. I don't want to have to draw out a map just to know where I'm going. The, what the fuck? What even hit me there? Did you see it? Am I getting attacked by ghosts? Now, if being trapped in a maze wasn't bad enough, I'm basically blind because this stupid blood effect takes forever to go away. I found the barrels, but that's not enough proof someone was here. 
Hey, here's some fucking proof for you. How about the human corpses you're carrying around with you? What do these barrels represent? A thought-provoking question, to be sure. Very philosophical. I got to two corpses left, but I got sick of wandering through this fucking maze half-blinded by blood. I think I've seen all this level has to offer. Thank god there's a level skip. Cutscene 2, I guess. What's this over on the ground here? What the fuck? D oh, it's this patch of ground here. Hey, wait a second. This was in the original Jeff game. They didn't change a damn thing. Well, I guess I'm all in for the ride at this point. Let's open some doors. A window. What's outside? What the hell? Are we on a fucking spaceship or something? I can't pick up this corpse. Aha! This was your doing. Uh, he's not attacker. Oh, oh, okay. He's a bad guy. I mean, I should have figured based on how he looks, but it's rude to profile people. I've wandered around this place for ages trying to get out, but every single door leads to a dead end. I opened them all. I never even saw Jeff. Skipping again. And now we're in a cave somehow. I'm sure the story explains this. Yeah, nice level design. Surprisingly, this cave is much easier to navigate than any of the mazes I've just been through. After a quick run-in with a little girl who insists on breathing down my fucking neck, and some fucked up level geometry that slows down my running for no reason, I managed to brainlessly bubble my way through it. Hey Harpy, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Uh, what are you calling for? Where are I we? Got some cryptic messages from who is talking? That could be is this me? Why do I jump like JC Denton? Hold on, someone's knocking at my door. I'll be right back. Jane, where are you? Are you okay? So I guess this is a memory of when Jane the Killer died? I don't know, but it teleports me to another flower wallpaper coated maze. Oh, but worry not. Not only is the ceiling gone for no reason, now it's Shattered Memories flavored. Hey Jeff, how's it going? Yeah, no, I think I've seen what's on offer here. No thanks. Skipping again. Her, him, and it. Well, now we actually are in catacombs and we have a gun. Too bad we're never going to use it because it is dark as hell in here. I can't see a thing and I can't even turn the brightness up. You do have a shit ton of light sources, but you can't equip them and a gun at the same time. Not even the night vision goggles. The night vision goggles occupy the slot right above the gun though, so I can switch between the two somewhat easily and it seems like the best light source. Really, these other light sources are just obstacles from accessing your gun, and you have to scroll through all of them to access it. I wander around yet another fucking maze for a time, not even knowing what I'm looking for. I run into Jeff, and because the blood blinds me, I can't even see him to shoot him. Fuck this game. Let's just see the ending. The nightmare is over. You've been in a coma for quite some time. You're wondering what happened. You fell a long distance. We don't know how. Do you remember Jeff? It's the anniversary of his death today. March 13th, 1987. He was shot and killed for stabbing your old friend Jane. Do you remember her? Do you even remember the skinning of 1991? My lord, it was brutal. Happened twice. September and December of that year. In September, your schoolmate Jonathan Fiando was skinned and eaten alive. Body was taken from his casket, was never found again. Then in December, someone ate more than a dozen people and hid them in an unfinished area. Luckily, your dad was an investigator. He found them all but quit right afterwards. You'll be fine though. Just think about what you last saw. I win. I don't feel like a winner. I can't believe it. Every single game fucking sucks. Sonic.exe was the best one of the night. That can't be how it ends. I refuse to let that be how it ends. We're ending this video on a fucking high note, goddammit. Even if I have to bend the rules a bit. Now this is not a game based on a creepypasta, and honestly it's barely even a game. But it is a pretty great experience if you can stomach the cutesy anime vibe it starts off with. Yes, I'm finally talking about Doki Doki Literature Club. This is actually going to get its own video, but I didn't go through with making it since so many other people have said their piece. I didn't really have anything unique to add to it. 
But now that I'm talking about it, I'll say that I found it to be pretty great and right up my alley. It's got a pretty standard visual novel dating sim format, but the story is a lot of fun to go through. Even though the characters are pretty much all archetypal anime girls, I still felt for them quite a bit. A lot was done to make them feel like characters who had purpose in acting the way they did, rather than just ticking off a waifu checklist to appeal to as many nerds as possible. Like me. Like, hey, the obvious lollybait girl character is actually malnourished, which is why she's so small. The shy, quiet, worst girl is actually kind of a weirdo. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. She's, she likes knives! That's very weird! That's a big red flag! If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Uh, without warning, she puts my finger in her mouth and licks the- Oh god, she's so weird! I won't lie. If I- If I cut my finger, and a girl started just like, sucking on that shit, it'd be- be a little hot. I thought the poems you read would be the most boring part of the game, but they're all surprisingly well written and give real insight to the characters. One character's poems are even directly compared to Shel Silverstein's work. Without getting into spoilers, it has one of the single most scarily accurate depictions of depression I've seen in a long time, and after a certain point, it really starts to feel like a creepypasta. With hidden scary images, glitchy imagery, characters acting out of the ordinary, and even hyper-realistic eyes. But it's all well paced, and the presentation is so great that it all kind of works. Not to mention there's a good explanation for all this crazy stuff happening in-universe. It all holds up, except the hyper-realistic eyes. Those are, uh, those are just kind of there. And hey, at the end of it all, you get a nice anime girlfriend who will never let you go or love anyone else living in your computer forever. And frankly, that's all I can ask for in life. From my anime girlfriend to yours, I'm Fish Stick on a Stick, and thanks for sticking with me. We'll see you all next time. Hey, if you thought that was good shit, then make sure to head on over to my new video game channel at FasoSTF2. I got a couple videos up and ready to go for you guys. One of them is to sort of transition my audience who are more fond of my analytical approach. A massive comparison of Jurassic Park Operation Genesis to Jurassic World Evolution. And another is more representative of the content you can expect the most of on this new channel. It won't take away from the other videos, the majority I'm just going to be making in my spare time when I'm already playing video games. These big analytical videos will only come out every so often. So again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.